He's right with you, me. I ain't got nothing to say did, either way. Did you tell them who no, we are? No, I didn't. I don't even know who I am. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. At 79 years old, I'm beginning to wonder, who am I? And I'm beginning yeah. to wonder, who cares who yeah, you are? Yeah, and who cares, really? I can readily understand <coughs> why <coughs> governments want to get rid of the old people. Well, I can, too, some of them. Yeah, and some of them won't get rid of them even before they get old. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, I can remember when things were so far different uh, than they are today, and incidentally, what we're talking about, I'm Wild Bob, and this is Ronnie, and you're on the Wild Bob and Ronnie Show, coming to you from La Follette, Tennessee, U.S. of A. And this uh, year on March the 18th, uh, 2014, at roughly a little bit before five o'clock, we just we were just so raring to get started. We started a little bit early, so we want to welcome uh, all of all of my two brothers and sisters that's tuned in. I don't have any brothers and sisters to tune in, so I guess ain't nobody watching me. <laughs> I'm the only one being watched, I reckon. Uh, but you we, need we, to be watched. <laughs> yeah, I, you are watched every minute of your life. And when I say things are so far different today, um, I love driving that old truck I got. It draws more attention than anything else. I was selling down Those Jack things Park. like that tend to draw flies, too. <laughs> I was selling down Jackfur Pike uh, yesterday, and uh, I passed one of, uh, of uh, uh, Caraville's finest sitting alongside the road, you know, there's two of us in the truck. We had our seat belt on. We were running about 44, 45 miles an hour by the speedometer. Uh, there was a car way up ahead of me. He was parked there somewhere right about where the uh, 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 new school is off to the right there, the one that goes back to Butter and Eggs Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got way on down there almost to uh, uh, the lake. And nobody behind me, a slower car in front of me, uh, and I switched lanes and went around them and didn't give a signal. Okay. I'm a terrible criminal is what I am. Well, I go on down, go under the stoplight at uh, Caryville, and I get back to the right end lane because I'm going up by 75, and he pulls me over for not giving a turn signal. Okay. He said, you know you're supposed to give a turn signal. I said, yeah, but there was, <laughs> wasn't nobody behind me or anything. I said, I just didn't even think to uh, uh, put the turn signal on. I didn't think to tell them I learned to drive before there was even turn signals <laughs> on an automobile, you know. And uh, It's still legal to hang your arm out, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, I could have helped my arm out. And I should have told him, I said, didn't you see me take my arm out? Uh, but I didn't. He was real, real, real nice. I want to compliment uh Caraville, uh, he was very, very nice. I explained to him, I said, I didn't think anything about it. I said, nobody behind me, nobody in front, uh, other than that one car, and I just switched lanes. I didn't I didn't say what I wanted to say, that if I had been driving the late model automobile, he wouldn't have paid no damn attention to it. I agree with you. Uh, and only because I was driving that old car, and he said, well, I bet that uh, guy ain't got no insurance. I bet he probably ain't got no driver's license. Uh, he's probably drunk. And uh, I had more trouble. I had an old beat up Toyota, and I got stopped once or twice a week. And I was just as legal as anybody else, and I ain't never drove without insurance. Right. Well, I've had insurance on my vehicle since 19 that I was covered since 1951. No, I've had insurance not since 1961. Right, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've, had, I've carried insurance that long, you know. And uh, But I've decided uh, I've got to do a couple of little things to that truck, but I'm going to drive that son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> excuse my language, folks. I'm going to drive it uh, from now on. And let them stop me as many times as they want to. Well, that 78 Chevrolet I bought off of you, I just wish it was a 68. Right. If I could get under them, whenever they, whenever they finally get around to making us 
go get them inspected every year. That and that needs to be a little bit older. I believe seventy two was a cutoff date. Right. But I'd like to have one a little older, and I'd drive it till I couldn't go no further. Well, I'll take. I'll start looking around and see if I can't find one for me, and maybe one for you too. Well, if you find us one, find me a Chevrolet, cause I can work on it. Right. Get a uh, Ford. I've had good luck out of Fords, but they're hard to work on. If I can get me a about a seventy model Chevrolet of some kind. I'll just keep it on the road, and the devil be damned. I won't care right. what happens. I just like to have. I, I don't care if it's got a six straight six engine in it. Oh no, I'd like to have one. Or a V six either one. You no, know. No, now they didn't have no V sixes back then. Oh yeah, they, yeah, they did do that. Well, they uh, had them old big truck engines. Yeah. I don't remember what they was called. Yeah, they had them old big because I got one sitting out here in the bushes that I bought. Uh, that's about a. It's a 50 some model. It's got a big V6 in it. I can't remember what they had, but I believe they had a V6 for yeah, truck motor. Yeah, it's got a big V6 in it. Yeah. Well, I don't want one of them. I want just an inline 292 or 250. Them 292s, right. them 292s had plenty of power. They oh, had no sure long they did. stroke, you know? Sure they did, yeah. Uh, and uh, everything off of a 250 will fit them except the side plate. It's, right. They're taller. Right. I'd plate that covers the, the push right. rods. I'll see if I can't, can't come up with one, you know. Uh, now, Dad, if you find one dry, I'd like to have one I could just shift the title off and claim that's a 70 model. Right, well, I'm, I'm kind of the same uh, uh, line of thinking there. Uh, you know, they're going to eventually come up with an inspection. Oh, yeah, you they've know. already getting it, and I think they got Memphis and Nice from Chattanooga. Right. But now you take, let me tell you about inspections. They've had them in North Carolina for years. Yeah. They can inspect could, them without I seeing them. I could them, always, I could always get on the phone. Says, I need, I need an inspection sticker for such and such make car. Yeah. I'd give them the serial number. And for $9, I'd go by that and wouldn't even drive in that automobile. Yeah. And give them $9 and pick up my sticker and go up there and slap it on the windshield. Yeah, I know. I don't know what the world's coming to. You know what gets me is the county down here is in dire straits because they're uh, 300 something thousand dollars short on their coal severance tax. Oh, and now, coal severance tax. They're going to okay. have to raise taxes because okay. they. Now, I don't understand. I thought we were selling sunshine and getting a whole bunch of money off of TVA, but that's beside the point. They didn't foresee this. Obama went in there. Before he went in, he promised to put the coal industry out of business, and they didn't see that that was going to happen, and they came, now they're just blindsided. Well, we didn't need to spend the money on the money hole park. We didn't need to buy all these things, these year extra buildings and these year uh, new offices for the school. When we had buildings that we gave away, we didn't need to to put $125,000 in the three sides and the roof for a place to store the voting machines. When we had buildings that was tearing down, we didn't need none of that stuff. But we spent the money, and we couldn't foresee that there might be a coming a time when we'd need it. Well, well, I got better plans than that. I, I tell you something, I, I know whenever I'm going to go broke and I try not to waste money, but they don't do that. No, they don't. They do they, they good as long as somebody else's money holds out. Yeah, you can always buy whatever you want to for somebody else's money until they run out, and I run out a long time ago. Right. Well, all I've been spending is mine. I ain't got nobody yeah, else's. No. If we could spend. spend the others, and now we're, we've got a bunch of people deciding. we got a fella running for... Uh, city, I mean county commissioner that has a reputation of spending other people's money anytime he gets the opportunity and it always thinks there's more to be had. Right. You and got a couple of them. Unfortunately, we've got several of them. Yeah, well, you, you got a couple of them well-known names that uh, uh, do that sort of thing. And, uh, uh, you know, it's time to, to bring some uh, realistic thinking into our government. It's you past know. time and it ain't going to happen well, because you're going to have it, to go with the I people. I don't think it is either, you know. I'm just going to let the government go busted if they, you know, and I, I just, I'm tired of talking to them about it. I may just sell everything I got and then not worry about paying property taxes. Right. I can do real good. 
Right. Well, carry on a minute. I've got right. to do something here. Okay. I do that, but uh, you know, we've got an election coming up here uh, for a county commissioner, and uh, we can replace all 15 of them uh, with uh, somebody else that uh, probably won't do a whole lot better job, but I guarantee you we could go over to Knoxville and get 15 people uh, out from under the bridge uh, that uh, are sleeping under the bridge, and they probably would do a better job uh, than what we've got in there. And uh, I'm not saying there's not some good ones in there, but... Uh, we just don't know which ones they are, do we? Yeah, it's just a real-world difficult situation. But you better be thinking about who you're going to elect for county commissioners, and you better be thinking about who you're going to elect for city council. we got a city council race coming up uh, just a little bit later. And, uh, and they done running out of money, too. Well, they've already said that they're... Uh, Tax, their tax base is diminishing. I wonder why. You reckon it's got something to do with putting everybody out of business? They have no idea. They don't, they don't, they want it to be pretty and we got to pay for it, but they don't figure out where the hell we're going to get the money. Right. Well, you know, I've mentioned before, like the new Bojangles that's going in. I like Bojangles cooking now. Don't get me wrong, I'm not down on Bojangles. But to bring another place to eat into this town is not doing anything but cutting up the same amount of money that's going to be spent for uh, dining out among just one more operation. I think we need to start pushing since we've got a, getting a pretty good radio audience and it's starting to build. We're getting some coverage now. We're getting people interested. I think we need to start campaigning, not for any particular candidate, Unless they slide us some money under the table like everybody else yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but I think we need to start campaigning on this tax increase that's coming up on the, in the city and the county and start letting people start thinking, maybe. Right, yeah. Well, there's going to be one coming right, over, right along. Oh, I know it. This, I mean, they'll, have, they'll manage some way to, to slide the nickels around and put it off till after August, but you better look out after August because it's coming. Them fellas is going to put it to us. And it's because they waste it. And I don't care. It's just like you give the city two-thirds more taxes than they've been getting, and then it don't take them long, and they're running out again. They, they've they, already spent their surplus. Yep. And, uh, and they, promised more. They've done to obligate themselves to yeah, more. Yeah, I know that. Building bridges that we don't need. Right. I mean, what, what's the use? If, if somebody's going to give you the money to build a bridge, that's going to say it's going to cost one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and they give you a hundred thousand. You got to put up fifty. Well, you're getting a new bridge, but if you're getting something you don't need, you're fifty thousand dollars worth off. Fifty thousand dollars on something you didn't that's need. That's absolutely that's right. That's not going to help the city. I don't see anywhere in the world that Beach Street well, bridge it, is going to help the city. Well, it'll, two things: it'll be pretty. Oh yeah. And bridge builders will get some money out of it, right. and politicians will get some. Money. Thank you. Get some yeah. thank yous out right. of it. Oh, yeah. yeah we, we'll be forever indebted to them for providing yeah. us a new bridge. In fact, the uh, pedestrian traffic is so heavy there, that's their main I ain't concern. never seen nobody walk across that bridge. Uh, but just remember, Campbell County has the best politicians money can buy. Yeah, they do do that. They've got some that I, I, don't, I don't know what uh, they shouldn't be... Uh, well, now they've done away with the crazy houses, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. And they've done away with the poor houses, and I don't know where we're going to go when they get done spending their money. I don't know where I'm going to go, you know, because they've eliminated both of my future residences. Well, they eliminated one of your former residences, and they got rid of the crazy houses, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, let me ask you something, Bob. When's yeah. the weather going to fire up? I'm wanting to go to the lake and play. I think uh, we'll have a little fair weather tomorrow. Let me uh, ask you something else. Feller gave me th three hens and a rooster yesterday. Who did? I mean, somebody gave you three yeah. hens and a rooster. And I took them and put them in my chicken house. Right. And while I was, I mean, they spent the night there. Right. They was there this morning. I went up there this afternoon, and they had many, two of them hens had managed to get out. Okay. Well, one of them I saw. 
And what I was wanting to do is want to keep them up at night or two so they know where home was. Right. So I decided since one was disappeared somewhere, if I turned them all out, maybe they'd all bunch up. Right. So I turned them all out. Okay. I went back 30 minutes and couldn't find her and her feather in either one of them. <laughs> so you reckon they'll come home tonight? I don't know. They, uh, I don't know what kind of chickens they're they are. They're game, game hens and a game uh, rooster. Oh, they'll sleep up in the trees. There ain't no doubt where you find I had a whole colony of game chickens yeah. down on my farm at one I time. I had 27 game hens one time, and the whole, I mean, the hoot owls got every one of them because they wouldn't go in nothing but a tree. And I'm try right. I was wanting to learn to go in and let me lock them up at right. night. Right. They had food and they had water. And they still got out. Right. Well, you know, I've got uh, owl problem out of my house, too. And uh, now what you need to do is call the goat man and let him come out there and assassinate that owl. <laughs> well, yeah, I hope that owl will start lighting on uh, uh, my neighbor's yard over there. Maybe he'll get the animal and That's what I was blind. thinking. Yeah. When I was in school, we had this year... They had this Tennessee history book. Maybe it wasn't Tennessee history, but they was talking about conservation. This wasn't environmentalism back then. It was conservation. And they were talking about um, they had an infestation of mice or something. I don't remember what it was. And they traced it back because something was usually caught the mice. As, as, anyway, what it worked out that they had been killing owls. And they led us to believe that what a terrible thing that was to kill owls. Uh, people just shot owls, and that was awful because there wasn't enough owls and all these your other pests and varmints and vermin that overrun the place. And I went along with that. I also was led to believe that the reason there wasn't any beavers is because uh, the fur trappers got them all, killed them all out, and. I didn't realize at the time that the reason there wasn't any owls is because people was trying to raise chickens and they killed the owls. And right. I mean, you know, if the owls would leave my chickens alone, there ain't no way I'd bother an owl. Right. And the reason they was so hard on beavers is they'd dam up the creek and it'd come a flood and it'd break loose and wash everybody away. Right. And there's a reason for them things. And them people back in the old days had enough sense to realize that you didn't need wolves everywhere. Right. You didn't need panthers everywhere, right. and you didn't need too many of them dead damned owls everywhere. You no, didn't need too many owls, and you did not also need uh, all of these, uh, uh, what are these things they turn loose up there, and the blue, uh, up there, them, uh, uh, rattlesnakes? Huh? Rattlesnakes? No, 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 I'm talking about, Moose? Uh, huh? Moose? No, no, what, what's, uh, uh, those big uh, deer-like animals they turn loose up there? Um, elk. Elk. Uh, you know, I didn't need a whole lot of elk either, you know. Uh, uh, and well, de deers are very deadly on gardens and garden stuff, you know. And uh, so, uh, unless they perform some useful service, uh, the older people got rid of them, you know. And rightfully so, you know. Well, we have we have been led astray by the conservationist slash environmentalist. Well, the conservation was not bad. I mean, no. yeah, we needed to do some stuff different. Need to do things much different than we had. But the conservation movement got taken over by the de by dethroned communists right. who figured out a way to control property by right. going through the environmental claims. Right. And we've been had. Well, there was a, a little program uh, on one of the newscasts the other day about the farmer uh, that the federal government sued because he built, uh, a, pond. built a pond on his farm. $75,000 a day fine. Huh? $75,000 a day fine. Right. And he had already got, uh, he hadn't done anything technically wrong, and he'd got uh, backing and approval of his, 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 uh, Senator or congressman or something. I mean, it was just, it was bureaucrats needing something to do, is what it was. Right. Yeah. Well, well it's, we've been on for 20 minutes, Bob.
You need to tell them about that there vital care people. Well, I can tell them something about it. This I is give from them personal experience. Knowledge of vital care, which is located here in La Follette. It's a privately owned uh, medical transport uh, company owned by John Bond, operated by John Bond, who has over 40 years' experience in the ambulance business. They have modern equipment. They have well-trained and polite and courteous uh, personnel. Uh, and uh, when they come and pick you up, uh, tender love and care is their motto. And you don't have to worry about it costing uh, the taxpayers any money at all because it is self-sustaining. Uh, it makes its own way. And in fact, instead of taking money away from the county, it brings money into the county. And it creates uh, uh, opportunities for people to work without the government having to pay them. So that's vital care. That's 5629370. 5629370. 5629370. Well, what if you forget the number? Oh, well, if you forget the number, call 911 and, and request vital care. They'll send okay? them out. And uh, if, you, uh, if you can't remember the number for 911, call 494 uh, 5020. Uh, and uh, Ronnie will give you the number for 911. I will. I really will. The number yeah. for 911, I'll look it up for you. Man. You know, uh, did you see that thing they've been talking about Obama whenever he laughed at Romney for saying that uh, our, big, our biggest geo something other threat was uh, was Russia? Uh, what about all kind of ho ho ho? Don't you know the Cold War's been over for been 20 over years? 20 years. Ho 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 ho. ho, ho, ho. Oh, well, I guess... Do you a, ever see anybody that, I mean, a country... I, I First off, I don't think we ought to have been sending troops to, to Ukraine. I don't think... I, I, I can even say, see Russia's side in this thing, but if we had had any backbone, it wouldn't have happened. Right, no, if we had... If we had had the right posture in, yep. in the past, mm -hmm. uh, this wouldn't even occur. But now, whether we should have been going, I mean, we wouldn't like too much if, if Russia started um, taking over um, uh, well, Mexico. You, you look at Cuba. Well, yeah. yeah. Our response to Cuba. Yeah. But uh, here's, the whole, here's the thing I'm getting to. We need some sort of a backbone in our leadership, or we need to just pack up and quit. Well, I think so, because uh, in all honesty, Russia is just laughing at us. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, you got a, you got a country there that, that, uh, that instigates some sort of a international, and that is international since it involved more than one country, some sort of an international incident. So our response is we sanction, whatever that means, we sanction nine Russians and you know, seven Russians and and four Ukrainians. Right. And, I mean, you know, uh, the the um, National Hot Rod Association sanctions NASCAR, but yeah. that ain't a bad thing. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that. I think yeah. they mean it in a different way, but the point is, what are you going to do? You're going to say, well, you you know, well, I think Newt Gingrich said this morning that means they can't go to Disneyland right. no more. Right. For sure. Well, now you take uh, as far as uh, uh, repercussions. You know, I have a uh, nephew that's over in the Ukraine operating a business, an American business in the Ukraine. Now, he's subject probably if Russia goes on into uh, mainland Ukraine, takes that over, he's subject to get run out of there, you know. So, yeah. Uh, well, you know, if you get to looking at the, at the physical layout of the country there, I can understand why Russia wants the Crimea. And although they say that there might have been some chicanery going on with that recent election, like they had more people voted for it than there was there, right. I do think the vast majority of those people wanted to be with Russia because right. that, was their, that was their roots. Yeah, well, a, lot, a lot of more of uh, Russian descent. But the point is, had we shown any backbone over the last five and a half years, it wouldn't have happened. They wouldn't have done it to George 
W. Bush, that's our well, the guy that was so stupid. Well, right now, if George, if they had done it, what do you think George would do? I think he would probably be smart enough to say, look, we're going to make sure that you don't do any business anywhere else. That's the way we bankrupt. That's the way Reagan bankrupted. Well, uh, right, Reagan outspent them on... Uh, well, he, uh, not only that, I didn't realize as much as that Reagan was nearly as deep as he was. He talked Saudi Arabia into flooding the market and dropping the price of oil and cutting off Russia's revenue. At the same time, he was increasing spending on armaments to the point that Russia couldn't keep, keep up, it. and they didn't have no choice but well, to quit. Well, now, right now, I'll tell you what I, I would do if I were president, okay? Uh, if you I, were president, I, I, I'd move. I, I would take... Uh, uh, first of all, I'd take a vacation. Yeah. Okay, because. Uh, and play some golf. I mean, after you being can't in, bowl and you can't play in, football. Being in office two or three days, I yeah. would need a vacation. But no, in all re reality, I would open up all of our energy reserves our oil, yes, our natural gas, our coal. I would drop the price so much that uh, uh, it would ruin Russia's oil export. It also would cut down on the profit that these Muslim countries are getting and using to promote terrorism. Uh, and let all these sheiks and shahs and everything over there uh, start worrying about where their next meal is coming from. Then they'll quit funding Al-Qaeda and all these other... Well, you can't groups. take a, uh, an affirmative action president who's never been anything except a community organizer and a pseudo-professor and expect him to know anything about international diplomacy. But if he were knowledgeable enough, and he had been experienced enough, and I'm thinking that for, say, Joe Biden is their foreign policy expert, then they're in real trouble. But had he had the right track record up to this point, he could have called up old Vlad and said, Vlad, you know, buddy, this don't look good. You do what you got to do, and we'll do what we got to do, but you're going to get hungry in a few days if you don't. Well, and that was right. all it would have took. I, I was saying, by the way, you're going to uh, see the uh, missile defense system mm -hmm. for Poland and Czechoslovakia put back yes, on the, uh, yep. the burner, mm -hmm. and uh, that's exactly what I'd do. Well, I wouldn't have took them off. If he had not done that, he probably wouldn't have been in this predicament he's in now. Yeah. Now, I don't, I really, if you stop and think about it, we're kind of, we kind of pushed Russia around. We had no business trying to get all of the satellite countries into NATO because that's kind of pushing his border and they've got a country to defend. Right. They've got the biggest land mass of, of any other country in the world. They've only got 150 million people there right. though. So they're spreading thin and they're getting thinner all the time because their birth rate ain't keeping up with their death rate. Right. And they don't encourage immigration from Mexico. Right. So. We, we could win this, this thing again in, 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 in a hurry if we had anybody with any, any backbone. Well, and you any know what, what I say about it? I'd look at what's going on over, over there and I'd say no problem. I would not have any problem with taking care of that situation. Well, now, here's the thing about it. When your ultimate goal is to diminish the United States uh, and the world and to bring them possibly to their knees for all their previous transgressions oh, because we're the bad guys yes, sir. You, yeah. you're you're on the right track so i you there's not a whole lot there you need to do you're doing it right, right. uh mr barack you you own right you're on the right well, track well you know uh, obama's letting them uh giving up of what we still have left of the internet yeah which the internet was our uh, baby, we're the one that devised it, brought it into being. It's our thing. It's like Casa Nostra is our thing, you know. Uh, and uh, I don't think we ought to relinquish what little we have left. I don't either. Uh, but there's another thing about that. I actually think the tech people are going to, I don't, I don't think this is going to be a major thing because they're going to, this thing works in such a way, I believe that the biggest fear that they have is the internet. And, and the accessibility to information that so many people have, and I think it's going to get more so. Whatever they do, the genie's out of the bag, and they're going to have to just completely shut down the communication system or start shooting people because it's done gone too far. Right. But 
that don't mean there ain't going to be a lot of roadblocks pitched up in different right. places. And they yeah. say, you know, the only way we're going to do this is to make sure there's the internet remains free and open. And that's kind of like whenever they said, whenever we clean up the air and water, we're not going to do anybody any disservice. We're just going to well, make sure. I, 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 and I kind of like Obama's position on what I think he he's taking as far as California and the uh, Mexican population there. Uh, I was kind of hoping maybe that California would break off into the uh, Pacific Ocean, uh, you know, from uh, uh, earthquake activity. Uh, and just float now, off? Yeah, just float yep. off now or, or submerge itself. Uh, now, uh, Obama, if there was a push by the Mexican population in California uh, to gain autonomy, I think Obama would go along with it. Well, I'm kind of looking from split into six states. Right. Because they wouldn't have near the clout then on the election thing, on the electoral right. college. They'd right. also have them people that's trapped by them are guys in San Francisco and, and Hollywood. I mean, they got farmers out there trying to make a living, but you got all them are do-gooders down there making the laws, and they ain't nothing they can do about it. Right. Well, that's especially true in Colorado, too, where you have uh, the farmers have been excluded by the yep. people that live in... Uh, Denver and uh, real populated areas. I tell you what amazed me was how fast that this year Obama agenda got started because we had been fighting codes and zoning here, I had anyway, for 20 years and had been able to hold the line with a little sanity and we still could have managed it on the local level. Right. But before Obama even got in office, they'd already set the plans, and they come in with this Obama Energy Initiative and got people who claim to be libertarians even sponsoring bills to set this thing in yeah, motion. Yeah, you're talking about the mayor of Knox County. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, he laid it out. If he had, hadn't uh, voted it out of his committee, uh, then it would never have well, come into being. He was a co-sponsor. Yeah, I know that. And then you had our illustrious uh, Senator uh, Yeager. Ken Yeager yep. and uh, our wonderful uh, representative Dennis Powers. Uh, well, Dennis Powers didn't have nothing to do with that. Uh, well, I don't know, but he's had an awful lot of things to do yeah, with Yeah, that's now. later, though. Yeah. But you remember, we had Chad in there, and Chad, uh, he couldn't Baldy. head it off, but now... Chad, he, Chad, Chad, he, he did manage to get us the possibility of an opt-out. Right. I mean, I was on the phone to him that day they was voting in that thing, and I right. said, we got to get there, and we did. We, 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 your phone's doing something. We got the opportunity to opt out, and then the new county commission didn't even look at it. Right. Well, that's true, but you know, let me ask something. Don't we still, upon the election of a new county commission, still have the option to opt out? Well, I, they say we do. I doubt it, but they say we do. But where are you going to get anybody to opt out? Everybody running is, is statist. Well, that's true. Uh, Whit Goins is the only one running to uh, go along with who? it. Whit Goins. Whit's the only one that's independent thinking. Yeah. you got uh, uh, Cliff Jennings. Yeah, okay, there you yeah. go. Well, Cliff is a governmentalist. Mm -hmm. A statism, whatever you want to tax and spend, what, what, tax and spend type of person. He's been walking around with his hands in his own pocket now for four or five years. And it's killing. And he's him. now he's ready to put them back into the uh, uh, other people's pocket. And, uh, and you know what they say when you've got a what is it? It's try something another, try umber it, try something when you've right. got Beard and Young and Cliff. Right, Beard, Young, and Cliff, and... Uh, they won't uh, talk to you bad, Bob. What? They won't talk to you bad. Uh, ain't, ain't, ain't a he, okay? I'm going to cut him off. <laughs> okay, it's probably somebody wanting to sell me something. That's what I figured. Yeah. You that know. ain't nobody wanting to pay you, no, ain't nobody wanting to pay me or buy nothing, you know. So, uh, but... Uh, You got you've got that bunch that would could not make a living 
if it were not for the government. Uh, Cliff, he can't make a living without the government mm. uh, unless he uh, gets by with doing something illegal, you know. Well, he's uh, never been known to do that, has yeah, he? No, 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 never been known to do that. You've got uh, uh, David Young, who has subverted his position in the government on Newport, numerous occasions. Uh, in fact, he's even been let out of the uh, uh, county seat uh, in handcuffs. So, uh, uh, you know, you've got uh, uh, William Baird, which William's first job, I think, was as a county agent, uh, which was a government job. Uh, William, if he can't go home and watch soap operas in the afternoon, you know, that's the only reason you got David Young there, so David can look at things while he goes watch soap operas. So. Looks like he could TiVo them. Yeah, yeah, but no, He'd miss he, the stuff he wants them fresh. Fresh. <laughs> fresh. Yeah. I'm glad I ain't got television at home. Right. Uh, yeah, true. Uh, so, I mean, we, we've got everybody that's involved in this government just about is involved for ulterior motives. Well, we've been on almost 40 minutes and we ain't talked about Digger well, yet. Well, you know, yeah, I want to tell them about Digger. You know, I want to, them to rest assured that not only does Digger have gas, He's we got, got pro- some of these guys. He's got propane also. Yeah, we've been we've been using right, it while we're, we've been here. We're sitting here right now toasting ourselves with some of Digger's. Uh, that may be about the last of his wintertime fuel. I yeah, you want to start not. burning that flavored stuff yeah, now. Yeah, we we'll have to get some mesquite or some hickory flavored uh, My, propane to do some grilling. I had with. I had to say it, but I had to finish from from one to daylight this morning with electric heat at home. Really? Yeah, cause I uh, digger run out about uh, about one o'clock this morning, and and I knew he's going to. I had a hundred pound tank out there, right. but I waited it run out, and it worked out okay. But I don't like that electric heat near as much. It's too dry. Right. Yeah. I love I love my propane heat. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know they're, they're showing on television, watching the television over top of the monitor here. They just showed a picture of uh, the Twin Towers being a uh, simulation of the Twin Towers being uh, hit with... Uh, They're trying the, to decide whether it was an inside job right. or not. Well, you can see right then that it was an outside job. What uh, they need to do is build it back and run into the airplane and see if it falls down again. Yeah, that's what they need to do. But we, we underestimated the ability of... Uh, the, of Al Qaeda. Uh, in fact, we were not even sure that they were uh, that they were what they were at that time. But one of the problems we had back then was that uh, William Jefferson Clinton kept one department of the government from talking to the other department. Yeah, of the and government. they had another problem they too. They had all those walls built up, so if they could have connected the dots, uh, then we probably could have averted. Uh, Nine one one. We had uh, when the first tower went up about a little over a third of the way up. They encased that their center support column with asbestos as a fire retardant and to keep it, you know, the structurally sound in case of the fire. They outlawed asbestos in the process, so they finished that tower up without asbestos, without the insulation around the center steel support. Then they built a second tower, and they didn't use any asbestos at all. The second tower collapsed all the way to the ground. The first tower collapsed down to the asbestos-coated center thing, and they had to tear it down. Now, I ain't no great asbestos fan, but the environmental people was a major cause of that thing, both of them falling down. I'm not saying that people wouldn't have been incinerated 
and I'm not saying that they wouldn't, maybe all have died anyway, but they'd have had a lot more opportunity to get out of there if it hadn't fell down on the way as they were going down the stairs. Right, that's true. Very, very true. You know, uh, uh, the environmentalists uh, and uh, the people that you take, uh, they've killed more people than they've ever saved. Oh, they killed millions in, in Africa and, and uh, the subcontinent there every year because of the um, uh, DDT ban. Right, yeah. Yeah. That's very true, you know, because uh, the uh, 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 all of the germs and everything that are carried by mosquitoes, mal malaria in particular, uh, we estimated that there was an additional 18 million people to die as a result of the DDT ban. Most of them children. Yeah, yeah, most of them were children. But do you think those people who banned DDT, uh, they still think they've done the world a service? Mm -hmm. You know, Rachel Carson killed more people than Hitler. Right. Yeah, she did. About three times more. Yeah. Uh, but you know, that's not five six two five four 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 right in the middle of some mill holler for right. digger. I've got to tell you that. That's Wil Wilson's propane and five six two five four four four. Right. It's right there in that little card that he's drops there down. every day, uh, starting on Tuesday. Uh, he's closed on Monday. He's there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and a half day on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And he's there to serve you. He can recondition or look after your propane. Uh, uh, Toes, heaters, or whatever you got, and he'd be glad to fix you up with some of the best propane you can get. And he does put more in his tank than you will get elsewhere. Digger Wilson, propane's his middle name. Five six two five four four four. Yeah, that's what he says. Five yeah. four four four. Yeah. I always saw it's five four four four. All right. If you're a Democrat, call 562-5444, and if you're not, call 562-5444. Right. That's the way Mark Levin does it. Right, there you go. There you go. You know, uh, once I said, we underestimated the uh, Arabs. Uh, they've been underestimated many, many years. Do you know how uh, uh, they took... Uh, I guess that was Baghdad or Babylon or something up there. Uh, they had a completely invincible wall around it. And they had gates down in the Tiburus and Euphrates River to keep the armies from going through uh, down the river, coming down the river in boats and everything. Yeah. So for years, several years, would a labor with uh, uh, that ain't nothing. Uh, no, that's yours, ain't yeah. it? Uh, with uh, probably uh, slave labor, they went up there and dammed up the river. Yeah. Put a yeah. dam on it. Yeah. Okay. And then, at a given notice, they closed the gates on the dam. Yeah. And the Tiberius and Euphrates River went down, and they walked under those gates yeah. that had been saw and saw to keep them yeah. out. Now you you talking about determination? Now that's determination uh, to do something like that. And they are so determined uh, that they are going to uh, uh, take over the world. That if you don't put up any resistance, uh, they will. Well, we've kind of done the city and pretty much done the county and got the federal. Who are we going to hit now, Bob? Well, let's see what we got here. Oh, well, you know, I was, start, I was starting to say that, you know, uh, I started to show off by telling you a little bit. We about ain't it. hit the states yet. Huh? We ain't hit the states well, yet. Well, let me tell you, I come out this morning like about a little bit before 9 o'clock and uh, I pulled a... Uh, I had to go, had to run down on Sawmill Holler, and as I was coming back out of saw, Sawmill Holler, uh, I stopped there at uh, the four lane, 
And what do you think the first car I saw coming down the road? Must have been a police car. It was a highway patrolman. Yeah. All right. Now, we not only uh, have to go through uh, Caryville police, uh, police Department to get here if you're coming off 575, the Jacksboro Police Department, the La Follette Police Department, the County Sheriff Department, which is all over, and all they seem to do is ride the roads, I don't know. And well, I feel a lot safer. Now, now you've got to come through a regular uh, highway patrol officer that makes it his little business, his little enterprise to come up here and get as many fees as he can from people coming through La Poly. Yeah. And Jacksboro. Well, times is hard. Huh? At times is hard. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is, and uh, that was the first thing I saw when I pulled out on the uh, uh, Jacksboro Park this morning. They wave at you? <laughs> no, I didn't wave at him either, you know. So. I figured you fellas pretty well acquainted. Right, no, I didn't wave at him either, you know. And uh, uh, But we've, you know, you can't go anywhere but you're not under government scrutiny. They yeah, the up. government definitely scrutinizes you. They, they, they will you definitely scru scrutinize you. You get scrutined a lot by the government. Right. right. And, uh, you know, I'm, it particularly is uh, odd to me because uh, uh, I was raised uh, during a time that uh, uh, the only time anybody uh, went on the sheriff's department was when they couldn't get a job driving a milk truck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, they have glamorized law enforcement so much uh, through television. You have know, all these. Well, problems. they've armed and equipped, equipped them with that their drug seizure money. They all feel like they're part of a combat battalion. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, you can see a little old lady pulled. I pulled over along Jacksboro a Pike. There'd be three uh, police cars there uh, to assist him. No, you, you know. never know when you might have some little old lady that's a terrorist or something. Right? Yeah, yeah, I know. And we done been through that over at Y12. Crazy, <laughs> don't she? She's a nun to boot, wasn't she? Right. You know yeah. that we probably on the register. I'm sure me and you are. Yeah, I'm sure so. Trying to smuggle the American pressure into Y-12. <laughs> oh, Lord. It, you know, it, it's comical to me. You know, I'm uh, of a generation, you know, uh, uh, before you. And it's really comical to me to see all the shenanigans that go on uh, with the government trying to make itself to appear to be the benefactor of mankind, and necessary. And if you get rid, if you get rid of ninety percent of the government and let let them do what they're supposed to do, is to make sure that uh, they preserve the peace, uh, register that, deeds, and enforce contracts. Right. Yeah. And uh, very little else they they, they need to do. I'm going to tell you something. It's like lawyers. If you didn't have one, you wouldn't need two. Right. That's a shame of the whole thing. I mean, if, if, if law were written in plain, readable language, would you need a lawyer to tell you what it says? No. No, you wouldn't. And they do. They, they intentionally uh, make it difficult to understand. Well, of course they do. Yeah. And let me mention something to you. My ex-wife had an accident that's been in the courts. It'll be two years the first next month. And yep. they, they have the trial scheduled for May. It has been put off and put off and put off and put off. Not at our insistence. And so you won't remember what happened. Yeah. Yeah, well, that uh, news for them. I've got a good memory. So, uh, that uh, hopefully it'll be over this May. Okay? Uh, They've seen her to the big house, yeah. what they'll do. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, uh, you're sitting there uh, in the medium and somebody hops the medium and hits you and goes backwards down the other side of the highway, uh, uh, come here, hit it, and went backwards all the way uh, there in front of the People's Bank of the South and wound up in Tyndall's parking lot uh, on the uh, eastbound yeah. side. Uh, and then they tried to say that Elizabeth pulled out in front of her when all the uh, debris and damage was in the eastbound lane, Elizabeth came across the westbound lane and was sitting still when she got hit and all the debris, they stopped all the traffic in the eastbound lane to clean up the debris. Yeah. And there was never no damage at all or debris in the westbound lane. If the accident had happened there, that's where the, all the debris would be. And uh, because you always have the dirt and everything comes out from under one when you have an accident. Yeah. So you can pinpoint where the point of impact was and all the dirt and debris and everything was in the eastbound lane up in front of her. And uh, so... Well, that's uh, about like that time when people snuck up on you coming up the wrong side of the road. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the thing was, this guy happened to know these people that come up the wrong side of the road on the apron of the road and hit me in the front of my automobile. Yep. And then the woman tried to sue me to get her car fixed. Yep. I wasn't worried about my old car, you know. And, uh, but because I didn't uh, uh, sue her, she said she'd sue me. How did that ever work out? The, uh, the insurance company, yeah, you know, I didn't turn it in. The insurance company, the insurance company investigated and turned their claim down. I had insurance on the car, you yep. know. Uh, well, out there, I, I, I couldn't believe that, that, that they, I, I mean, I know the situation is on the wrong side of the road. They yeah. said you pulled out in front of them. Well, you can't legally cause a wreck by pulling out in front of somebody going the wrong way. <laughs> but they wasn't even in the road. They were on the apron of the road. Just to, they were going to tear up that apron and then cut into the road. Yeah. And uh, I pulled up right where they were wanting to go. <laughs> and I was still stop stop when they hit me. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, that's nothing. Let me tell you, better one than that. That we had this real sudden snow back several years ago. I mean, it really come down quick, and uh, Elizabeth don't drive too good in the snow, so she pulled her car off up there right before you get to Poor Boys, almost in Poor Boys parking lot, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, she good and way off the road. And uh, there was one of our neighbors there that had a four-wheel drive. We took her on to work, okay? Well, this woman comes down the hill in this big four-wheel drive truck, loses control, and it hits our car sitting over there. And uh, I went to get a police report. Says, uh, they said, well, we didn't make one. Says, uh, snowy conditions like that. Says, that was an act of God. I said, well, I agree with you that the snow was an act of God, but her running into my automobile <laughs> wasn't no act of God. And uh, so he had to go and he, he happened to know where she lived or this, that, and that, but he didn't have any information or anything at all. And he had to go dig that up and bring that to me so I could file a claim against her for hitting my automobile. Yeah. So, yeah, trying to tell me that because she hit my automobile was an act to God. I said, no, the snow was, but her hitting my uh, car wasn't no act to God. Well, if you just if lived and stayed home that day, or if she hadn't been born, yeah. it wouldn't have happened. See, that's right, yeah. Because that highway was provided by everybody, you know. She didn't, she didn't buy that automobile. Uh, everybody helped uh, yeah, buy that Yeah, and built the road for her. Yeah. Looks like they had a building with kind of a curve to it there, right. maybe a, a, you know, a slant, so right. it, you never know. You know something? What? How anybody in the world could still be falling for Barack Obama is beyond me. I mean, you can never underestimate the stupidity of the American people. There are a lot of them that will fight you over him. I know. Well, this has been... I was a Goldwater supporter back before I could vote. I come to hate Richard Nixon. 
I mean, I, you know, between Goldwater and... Well, Goldwater and, was a really true conservative. He was. And uh, Richard Nixon was a really true Democrat. Right, that's all he was. And yeah. he, I mean, he he done a lot of damage. and But Barack Obama is making Jimmy Carter look like a diplomat and a scholar. Right, yeah, and a financial wizard. And, and I will say this, Jimmy Carter had done something in life before he got elected governor. Right. He was, he was, uh, he was a nuclear engineer and a... Um, uh, a veteran and a, a businessman who had actually done something. Right. This guy we got in there now ain't done nothing except show up for lunch and get affirmative action into the presidency. Right. But you know old Barry Goldwater uh, uh, was swamped by such a landslide that the Demo Republican establishment's afraid that that will happen again if they uh, Allow a true uh, so conservative they, to run for president. They keep but, nominating milk sops that don't stand for nothing and getting beat. But they don't realize that Barry Goldwater's uh, uh, political uh, life was the beginning of conservatism in the Republican Party. Now, uh, LBJ symbolizes the uh, ultra. Uh, liberal uh, Democrat and he was put things in such a mess that he didn't even run for re-election. No, no. He would he, he messed things up so bad he wouldn't even run for re-election. I remember when I was in Mayhem Hall walking through the dormitory one evening and, and uh, somebody, I didn't have a television, I walked by a room these guys had a television and it was uh, LBJ a talking. I stopped there and looked through the door and listened to him, and he said he wasn't going to run. I thought, well, that's good. You've killed enough people, so I'm full fledged behind Richard Nixon. Right. Still couldn't vote, and I'll be damned if he didn't turn out to be just another. <laughs> he just another LBJ. LBJ. I yeah. tell you what really got me with Nixon when was whenever they were running the election in '72, and he'd already done everything in the world to cheat and get elected like he had to and didn't, but Whenever uh, Kissinger come out about six days before the election and said peace is at hand, and then they went right back to bombing as soon as the election's over. Right. Uh, whether we should have been there or shouldn't have been there, we could have left. We could have left uh, five. When Nixon went in, that'd have been. Nine years earlier, we could have left nine years earlier. Uh, we never did have to go in there. We didn't have to go in there because of Phnom no. Penh, which they kicked the, the French's rear end. And but but I'm saying, when Nixon went in there, if he had just withdrawn, we wouldn't have been in any worse position than we were leaving in '75 right. after Nixon is gone. Right. Now I know he didn't want to. He didn't. He wanted peace with honor, and he didn't want to abandon the, the effort and all that. But he didn't accomplish anything except get another 30,000 U.S. soldiers killed. Right. Well, but, you know, I, I still say you don't ever fight a war unless you have the intention of winning it. Yeah. If, you, if you're if fighting it to lose and lose gracefully, you might as well not even fight it. That's right. And uh, when they would not bomb Hanoi or, or hit anywhere in North Vietnam, uh, I knew the war was already over. Well, whenever we we had to, uh, right or wrong, we had the war won until the North Vietnamese realized that all they had to do was hold out, even losing. If they could just hold out till we give up, they'd right. they'd get what well, they wanted. Same thing too in Afghanistan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we've got to go. Yeah, we have, folks. Enjoy we'll, being with you. We will be back Saturday, five o'clock. Four. four o'clock, excuse me, at four o'clock. We're going to write that down because I yeah, keep saying it's yeah. three and he four, keeps saying it's four o'clock on Saturday. And Bob will be there about 4.15. Right, right. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be on the internet. We'll be here on UGG TV. And we'll also be at uh, WLAF 1450 on your AM radio dial. That's so correct. So we look forward to seeing you on the radio. Hey, folks. See you.